So again, continuing on with the concept of being restricted in what you can do, you take a relatively straightforward thing like assessing the lumbar column and then you choose a position and restrict your options for treatment to help sharpen skills. So we do a quick lumbar assessment, bend your left, bend your right, okay. Or you twist your left, and twist your right. Okay, so you don't expect a ton of movement in the lumbar column with rotation, but you expect it to sort of follow. There's, it's actually difficult to name what the heck is going on here, because when you bend your left, go ahead, like it turns into the letter C, yeah, that looks a little bit better. And then turn to the right, bend to the right. Okay, so at the bottom, it, there's not a ton of movement, right? It's just, so the top of the lumbar column will side bend right, but the bottom, it's just kind of like a something that's not doing much. When you twist to the left, that follows. And when you twist to the right, that sort of doesn't follow. That feels tight, right? Fair. When you bend to the left, does it feel tight on the right or not? That doesn't. When you bend to the right, does it feel pinchy on the right? Uh, yeah, like in the really, like, okay. base. Yeah, like in the base of the spine. Yeah. So basically right here, everything kind of centers right here, what you feel when you move the vertebral column, is that fair? Yeah. And it's basically the bottom of the right. So obviously the camera's not picking that up and you guys aren't seeing that. It's just, it's the bottom. That's why you use your eyes because sometimes how the person moves will obscure it to some degree. Okay, so we've got the right side having stuff, okay? We're going to have you lay on your stomach with your head up there. So often when somebody has a challenge in side bending, what you would do is you would assume that the side opposite the problem, the muscles will not lengthen. They, they will shorten, they will not lengthen. That's the assumption, that's not absolutely the truth. But when you also have a challenge with rotation, you can assume that it's the opposite side as well-ish, but the, the way that the rotation or the muscles that generate rotation are described in the vertebral column as well as then considering the abdominal muscles, it gets a little weird and a little confusing and it, using those descriptions makes it actually tough to track it down. So if I just go to the area that's not moving, so with side bending, usually you would lengthen the opposite side. But when you feel something that's just not doing anything in the vertebral column, like it's not doing anything, it's usually just that thing. Hopefully that makes some sense, right? So. A description that I'll often provide is that when somebody side bends well to the left and they side bend poorly to the right and it looks like the right is like a rod, it's probably the right side that I'd work on. If they just do it poorly and the left side looks tight visually, then it's probably the left side. So it's a really superficial verbal description. It's not going to be perfect. But anyways, so I'm restricting myself. I will not use his limb, lower limbs. I will not rotate his pelvis. I can go patient active having him use his torso, right? These are the things that I'm going to limit myself to. And then I won't rotate the pelvis, like I won't do this, but I can steer a little bit, right? So what I'm thinking about here is the bottom of the right. So I palpate into it, right? So if my hand is here, I get none of it. Is that fair, right? But well, my thenar eminence is contacting it, right? So I'm going to have to change my hand position to get into what I'm looking for. Right now I'll steer. So now you've kind of feel nothing where my hand is. Is that fair? Yeah. yeah. He said, yes. Uh, now if I do this, you feel something, but it's not much. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So either direction. So either going this way, this softens it right up and he has essentially no sensation there. If I pull towards me a little bit, we get something. Now that feels the same as the other thing. Now it's kind of like there's no sensation. Oh, there's a little bit. There's a little bit? Okay, right on. All right, so we can often be wrong. This is why you ask the patient to try to correlate what's going on. Now, because he's breathing, I don't actually need an activating force. This is where you just sort of wait. Because every time he breathes, if I just hold on, my hand will go farther. All right, the, and I've shown this a few times, that when you let off smooth and slow, that's when you see how far you went through the muscle. Right now you didn't see it, but I took a little bit more. You felt a little bit more. Yeah. So it didn't look like anything happened. Is that correct? Right. So visually it looked like nothing happened, but I leaned in a little bit harder and it changed a little bit, or at least 
I went farther and the sensation under my hand changed. And he claims that this, he felt that thing, whether it changed in a good way or a bad way. It doesn't seem like a bad way because he's not pulling away. Just the waiting, 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 waiting. Okay. Now, when I push into that, that feels a little bit different to you? Yeah. Okay. Here, yeah. yeah. So, something like that. Now we sit up, face that way. This won't be perfectly visible to the camera. It may be visible to you. This may have changed nothing. <laughs> so we'll have you bend to the left because it's the good way. Right on and bend to the right. Visually see a difference there? Mm -hmm. I twist to the left because it was good. Right on, twist to the right. That didn't change as much, you'd agree? Yeah. yeah. So the side bending changed. The rotation didn't change as much. So it's the restriction of what you're doing and doing things in a position that won't give you as much access. Because if you want to treat one side of the lumbar column, one of the easiest things to do is put somebody in lateral and be able to use their leg. You get a lot from that. Supine doesn't really do it because it's it won't move around as well. But prone, you really have access to the soft tissue and sort of the ability to wiggle the pelvis around to treat the lumbar column. It seems much more advantageous to put the side that you want to treat up in lateral. You can get a lot done there. You, can, you have access to the soft tissues. You have access to some of the obliques with, with ease. You can use the leg as heavy leverage. You get all of that. So in this case, we heavily restrict what we can do. I could have had him push his shoulders. I don't know if it would have made a difference. Lay down for a second. So what that could have looked like, right? So you'll get stuff like this. You can, I can have my hand in here. I can wing them. I can do this, right? That does something, it's just maybe hard on your shoulder. Yeah. Right? I can do this. This is hard work on me, right? It's, ah, it's not that bad. So you see how I bring my elbow in? So if you want to make this good, right? That feels like there's something there, but maybe like it's not quite getting it. Yeah, it's hard on my shoulder too. Yeah, on your shoulder, yes. Yeah, it's not yeah. nice. <laughs> so, or I could just say, here, bring this up here. Uh, push this down. Yeah, well, that did some cool stuff. Let it go. Push this down. That did some cool stuff. Okay, so I didn't go patient active initially, so now I'm here. I'm showing it to you anyways. Push this down, and you'll see how it changes, what it does. Let that go. Push that down. Let it go. You see how stuff starts to wiggle around. This is relatively still, so it's the soft tissue and the bone relatively still under my hand. Push again. Let it go. Push again. Let it go, push again, let it go, push again, let it go. See how there's kind of less happening around my hand now? Push, let it go, and I'll pretend like that's enough. Right, so as less starts to happen with that active contraction around the point that I'm working, I stop, right? Or if it's this stops working, then I start to use this. When this stops working, I check this again, All right? We'll have you sit up, and we'll check as a rotation. Okay. When you I fi finally finished fiddling, <laughs> twist to the left, good, twist to the right, better, right? So those restricting the methods that you use means that you actually sometimes get more accurate because you just, you take choices away. So you have to really focus on whatever method you're using, making it as good as you can. There you go.